It's New Brew Thursday. Woo! And we are here at, <laughs> we're still here at the brew house. Uh, the, the Blue Palms uh, Craft Beer Bar. Our home away from home in Hollywood. Exactly. And uh, we're here with Annette Barron, who is the creator, I guess you want to call creator, it? Creator, producer, director, director, director producer, the maker, star. Quite yeah, the job of all right. trades, aren't you, Annette? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Of the documentary right. Beer Wars. I call myself the no talent talent, actually. Oh. Right on. Yeah. Well, then you're on the what perfect show. What do you mean right show, on? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, you're on the perfect show then, because, you know, we're, uh, we're a bunch of hacks to a table, table so, full you know? of no yeah, talent. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, no, I just, we, we spoke a little bit on the phone, and I've, I've wanted to get you on the show for a while, because Beer Wars is, for me, personally, is one of the reasons uh, New Brew Thursday came into existence in video form because uh, after I saw that and it was inspiring to me to see that like the struggle that I would see peripherally in my own life was actually real and blown up to this magnitude and so when I saw that I thought you know what I need to get in with the revolution I need to like fight the good fight and join do what I can to do it yeah join the revolution and start a beer podcast <laughs> so you know um, Thanks. Did you hate me now? Thanks. Yeah. No, because he dragged me along. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, Brad, you know, he had nothing else to do. So. Yeah. No, I, you know, I think personally, uh, the movie is, is, is definitely inspiring, and it's really, it's created a passion in me. I think it's created a passion in both John and, yeah, I think and Brad. All of, I mean, it's a really interesting movie, too. Yeah. yeah. It's hard um, not to get inspired by watching it. It's kind of a roller coaster. It's got ups and downs, and like, uh, it really, I guess, uh, showed me what you always talk about and how like never bud bud never buy bud never bud buy never buy bud <laughs> <laughs> and I was like why what's the big deal and then after watching them I'm like ah because they own everything sense. and it's like it, it, yeah but, but the it's one like, thing it, I took away yeah. from it was no matter what beer it seems that you buy in a grocery store they seem to own it or get money from it in some way you know and that was scary and I was like oh man and just when I started drinking I, what, what was the beer. Uh, like Boddington's. Right. You know, when I saw Boddington's, it was like, Boddington's? It, it was like, oh. Yeah, there's like that little moment of sadness. <laughs> like, oh, really? Damn. Really, Pub Hell? Why? Why would you do that to me? That's what I took away from it was there was so much control out there by the big uh, brewers and, you know, to, to they, they need to make as much money as possible and I can understand that, but at the same time, the, the movie focuses on basically squashing the craft brewer as much as possible getting choice out of the marketplace and stuff like that. It, it so. was cool how it focused on the people, though, not just in, um, like, you know, um, craft brews, but also you focused on the people in Anheuser-Busch and the brewers in right. Anheuser-Busch. And so you're, you personify them and say, oh, okay. It's not their fault. Like, you know, they're just, you know, trying to make a good beer. It's really just the corporation marketing and just kind of the machine. And Why, well, I think I have to ask, um, why did you make the movie? I mean, because you, you've gotten a lot of flack for your alcohol allergy, so we're not even going to... For the people watching it, yes, she's allergic she's to alcohol. Allergic to alcohol. <laughs> Stop being a hater, move on with your life. Anyway, so <laughs> here you are, you can't even drink beer. and Cranberry and soda. Cranberry yes. and soda. So why do you care about craft beer? You know what? When I started making the movie, it really wasn't... It didn't start out as, I'm going to focus on craft beer. It started out because I had worked in the beer industry, and yes, Mike's Hard Lemonade is not a beer. Let's get that out of the way. <laughs> it is a tasty malt beverage. However, and, I don't, and again, being allergic to alcohol, I don't even know what it tastes like. But what I can say is I worked in the beer industry. Uh, Mike's is sold on the shelf right next to all the beers. Right. And it's also distributed by beer distributors. And so basically I got a sense of what it was like to be a small independent company out against these big corporations. And I thought that there was an interesting story there. And so I started making the movie completely. I wish there was a great story and I could say, oh my God, I woke up one morning and I saw the light. And, An epiphany. Yeah, and it was God just showed his holy Ooh, temple upon but, me. <laughs> you know, it really started because I got an invitation in the mail to the annual beer industry convention. And mm. so it just kind of hit me, oh, you know, I wonder if anybody's made a movie about this. And what I did notice was all of a sudden in, uh, in late 2005, which is when I started making the movie, that there was starting to be this buzz about craft beer, but it wasn't really coming, because I didn't come from that world, because again, I don't drink it. Mm -hmm. But I, I started hearing about it actually from the distributors and from the big brewers. And they were starting to get, like, not I don't want to use the word nervous, because I don't think they're really nervous about it, 
but there started to be the buzz about what's going to happen. You know, it was they started also, to take note and pay attention to what's going on in the craft beer world. Well, beyond that, also there was all this stuff. I, I don't know if you remember, but back then there was a Gallup study every year about what Americans drink and wine was the number one drink instead of right. beer for the first time. So everybody started getting hysterical, and there was. You know, there was all this excitement, and I thought, what a great time to come in and start making a movie. I didn't know at the time exactly what it was going to be. When you start making a documentary, and anybody that tells you differently it's full of shit, I can say that, right? I just <laughs> did. Um, but you don't really know. I mean, that's the cool thing about making a documentary, because I used to make movies from scripts, which is so much easier. So if any of you are sitting at home, and for all those haters, too, who say somebody could do it better, I really go for um, it. Go for it. <laughs> I, I wish you all the luck in the world. And if you need some equipment, uh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, call me. Uh, yeah, we'll give my number out at the end. Um, bloop, bloop. <laughs> but ultimately, when I started making it, it really wasn't about craft beer. What happened was I went to this uh, convention, which is in the film, the uh, National Beer Wholesalers Association convention. Oh, my God. That takes a while to say. Yeah, and then I had heard about this thing that was going on in Denver, like three weeks later, called the Great American Beer Festival. Oh. Ding dong. Yeah. <laughs> and I, oh. I can't I, wait. <laughs> right, and I showed up at the Great American Beer. You know, I called the Brewers Association. They gave me names of like 10 or 15 brewers. I set up meetings. I had never heard of these people before in my life. So for all those people, too, who say, oh, Sam, he's a rock star. Of course she picked him. I'd never heard of Sam or any of the other people right, that the, I had Right, because again, this is back in, what, 95? Not 95. 95. 2005. 2005. 2005. Yeah. 2005. Right. It was, so, it was, I don't know why I said 95, but anyway. Yeah, I don't think any of them were. I mean, I, well, I guess Sam was just starting out. Twi but yeah, it was, most it of was these before people. Twitter. It was before the social media. It was yeah, before the internet. Was, yeah. right. It was well, it's not before the internet. But it, was, it was before this, like because I think that, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I think the reason I bring that up is I think that the the social media, Twitter, Facebook, all that stuff has really helped explode the craft beer community. And that's why people like Greg Cook and Sam Calgioni mm -hmm. and these people have become rock stars is because they've gotten these huge Twitter followers and they, they get these like kind of the celebrity status built around them. And they and, make really good and they make And they make right. amazing beer, <laughs> exactly. Hopes, but yeah. back then, that didn't exist. Well, yeah. there was, you know, I think that what happened was some of the sites were starting to build and some of the communities were starting to build, mm -hmm. but there's absolutely no question that the internet has really propelled craft beer. I think right. without the internet, but forget even without Beer Advocate and Rape Beer and all of those sites, and people being able to tell each other, oh, this is, you know, have you tried this beer? Have you tried that beer? And even, and I see it on Twitter too, even though it is illegal, so um, don't advertise it, and I would actually stop um, tweeting about it um, <laughs> in case Big Brother is watching, the, the, but you're not supposed to be sending beer yes. across state lines. Um, Who does uh, that? Oh, I have never done it. that. <laughs> but anyway, Ever. people are experimenting more. People are experimenting more, which is really, really cool. But again, so when I started making the movie, to answer your question, let's try not to make this too long-winded, it wasn't about craft beer. Now, I showed up at the Great American Beer Festival, and I started interviewing brewers, and it was a world that, for me, who doesn't drink beer, yes, okay, let's not talk about that again. We should um, you know she doesn't drink beer. beer. She does not drink beer. Alcohol. But, but so for me, you know, it's kind of like... Um, a diabetic showing up at the ice cream convention. You know, it's, you're, you're, just, it. you're just you're yeah, just walking around analogy. and everybody's really enjoying themselves, but it's a world that you really don't understand because you don't have access to it. And so what I found in these brewers that I interviewed was this unbelievable passion. And it's actually the first time I met Sam and I did a bunch of interviews. And when I met Sam, and people always think, oh, you picked Sam for all the obvious reasons, but actually I didn't. Sam had a story. And this is something else, you know, again, all the criticism against the film. Making a feature film is not like doing a TV show. It's not running or around. Or a video podcast. Well, <laughs> well, actually, but when you're doing it, you're 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 focusing on one thing, right? right. So nobody is criticizing you for doing a, a, a show about one thing. Whereas in a feature film, people want stories. People want an emotional connection. Right. And and a movie has to have a beginning, middle, and end. Unlike a television show or even a podcast. I mean, yes, you have a right. beginning and an end. But what you don't necessarily you? We, have, need a middle. we have complex story arcs. <laughs> yeah. Right, exactly. exactly. How dare you. And it's very emotional. And I've seen you guys cry once or twice only. Well, just Brad, <laughs> because he's a sensi. Yeah, yeah. Right. I tear up, okay? Oh, I don't right. cry. Well, tear I know up. when his hair isn't just right. I'm sure he cries when he watches the show. Do we need to put more beer in here? Yeah. Yeah, we'll do that. I, I'm actually going to put some cranberries Every person we sit with has really to good. comment on my hair, yeah. I think. Yeah, it's be I think it's, it's just becoming tradition. the thing. Yeah, yeah. The exactly. Thing. But the well, movie, but the movie is is ultimately about independent companies and their survival in America versus corporate America. Right. 
And you can take the storyline right. and, and remove craft beer exactly. and insert technology or any other facet of business, mm -hmm. and you'll have the same struggle that's happening. When I saw the movie the first time, was at uh, Stone Brewing Company. They had the outdoor movie thing, and uh, sat out there, watched the movie. You were there for that. Afterwards, we had a little Q&A. And of course, the first question out of my mouth was, why did you pick Rhonda? God, and I mean, no offense to Rhonda if you're watching the movie. You're, you seem like a great person. You have a nice family. I don't understand what she was trying to accomplish. Here's the thing, and I've heard this from thousands of people. And the issue that comes up more than anything else about the film is, why is Rhonda in the movie? She's this, she's that. Here's the bottom line. This is a film about David and Goliath. And she represents a David. Now, we could sit here and, and, and let's do it. You know, so, and, and I never, if you actually watch the film, and I'm happy to provide transcripts for those people who can't watch it again for whatever reason, but I never say that Rhonda is a craft brewer, right. ever in the film. As You're a right. matter of fact, when we go around and we go look at all the different brewers, Yingling is not, by nature, a craft. They make some craft beers, but they're not a craft brewery. Their lager has corn in it, you know, right. and, and yet it's very successful because they do make it well. So, you know, for me, the differentiation, again, not being a craft beer drinker, was there are independent breweries, mm -hmm. and there are basically today two corporate breweries. And that's it. That's what you have as far as American, uh, made in, let's just say made in America, because that's a whole other story. Uh, right. What is exactly. really American. Right. Exactly. And so I picked Rhonda for, for a very simple reason, actually, which is I already had Sam, right? If you look at the trajectory of the film, I had Sam. He was going to be the, the representative, if you will, of the craft beer guy, and I picked him, and I never finished that part of the story, because he had a story, because he was growing, he had taken out a $9 million loan, and I thought it would be interesting to see what happens. Is he going to succeed? Are there going to be problems? So, so we follow his story. I needed someone with a completely different story, and all the craft brewers that I, were meet that I was meeting pretty much had the same story as right. Sam's. Okay. So yeah. if you think about it, uh, who else, I mean, you know, so, so people send me all these lists of other people that I should have had in the film, but they didn't have an interesting story. So again, you're making a feature film. It's not a TV show, guys. Hopefully yeah. somebody will create a TV show and we'll go from right. brewery to brewery, or you guys will, and, and, and you're giving people that. Sounds like a challenge. Um, absolutely, <laughs> right. and I we challenge can, you. But we have that, that, uh, that format to give all those stories where right. you have a single one. You have, you have 90 minutes, because that's my attention span, certainly. I don't know about anybody else. So you have 90 minutes. You're trying to cover the, in, and again, this is not an excuse. It's the reality. It, you're trying to cover the entire U.S. beer industry, including the history, and and make it fun for people and explain things all along because a lot of people didn't really know about category captains or shelf spays or Can the feature system. I just say I think you succeeded? Well, thank you, and again, well, I yeah, thought, you well, know. Now that you explain it that way, yeah. the Rhonda story, it makes a lot more sense because it was a dramatic story and it, you know, it was interesting. And it wasn't made, right. frankly, when I was making the film, I didn't come at it as a craft beer drinker, so to me, her story, actually, and what's really interesting is now the movie's out in the mainstream, right? So mm -hmm. I'm not just hearing from bloggers who are beer folks and who, like, hate her with all their might <laughs> and hate me. And, and, you know, this is just the most awful thing that's ever been um, invented. What I'm hearing from mainstream viewers, she actually, pe people get it. And, and people also are seeing it as an entrepreneurial story. And, and ultimately, I think this film is really about consumer choice. If you like drinking Budweiser, Go for it. Right. If yeah. you like it, I, I'm not telling you not to. And frankly, they're very successful. I, however, at it. am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't really care because I don't have shares in any of these companies. But right. what I do care about, and the reason I did make this film, and I am passionate about this, part of it is that you should have choice. You know, I was not exactly. born in America, and I came here, and look, to an extent, and actually Sam had said this once to me, you know, you're like a craft brewer in that. You're an independent filmmaker, and you're out there fighting to get this, first of all, to get it made, and then to get it seen, and to get distribution, and to get awareness. It's the same journey. Yep. And how lucky am I that right now you can watch this film in your living room, on satellite, on cable, on iTunes, on Netflix, on Amazon, wherever the hell else you can watch it. That's pretty friggin' cool. Yeah. But I would like for craft brewers to have that same choice, right. to be able to be available wherever people want them. Because if you want to see this movie now, you can see it. Whereas if you want to craft beer and you live in a certain state, you can't have it. Unless or you violate the law and send it across right. state lines. Or, uh, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Which yeah. we do not advocate. Yeah, right. 
Well, I, I would, I'm, what I'm going to advocate right now is a little bit of American laziness, and that is even if you own the DVD at your home and you're sitting on your couch one day and you're thinking, oh, I want to watch Bear Wars, don't get up and get the DVD. Switch over to your on-demand, watch it from there. Yeah, it's easier. <laughs> at least well, once. You know what? I mean, I, I do want to say that what, what's been really interesting to me, I, you know, when you make a movie like this, you don't know who your audience is. I mean, I did make it for a mainstream audience because mm -hmm. I always knew, I'm not a complete idiot, that for craft, if I wanted to make a craft beer movie, I would have made a craft beer movie. I, you know, I went to the Great, Ameri uh, Great American Beer Festival back then. I met all the brewers. I mean, any of them would have been fabulous to have been in the film. Okay, not any, but most. <laughs> and uh, I, I'll name names later. Um, but, but I think that, um, that the reality is it wouldn't have been a feature film again. And so to make this movie and to make it worthwhile for somebody sitting in there. I mean, remember what it's competing against. I think that's oh, yeah. what a lot of people are forgetting. It's competing against Hollywood releases. This is the first film with the word beer in it where people aren't throwing up, you oh. know? Um, or there's boobies flashing on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, point. if yeah. you think about it, yeah. like if, if you're on, uh, looking at it on demand, it's like, <laughs> It, it's beer, beer fest, fest beer, beer league, wars. Yeah. beer wars, and and this film it may not be perfect for craft brewers, but I don't think the other movies really ever talk about craft beer or yeah. what it's about. And I have had so many emails and tweets and Facebook posts and whatever else, however else people want to communicate, phone calls from people who figure out where I live, who are saying, you know what, this film opened my eyes. So it is. I don't Does want to use the word. Out when we call you. Uh, yeah. yeah, especially those two, those, that guy was calling at two in the morning to ask me what beer to John, have. John, don't yeah. do that anymore. <laughs> yeah, sorry. actually, you've been blocked. Oh. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Well, I, I think one of the one of the biggest like moments in the movie for me, or not biggest moments, but like things that I thought was was really funny was the how awkward. Of her. Yeah, well, that too, <laughs> that especially when big. you turn green and like pump yeah, up. that was big. Um, That's because I'm allergic right, to oh. beer. Yeah. <laughs> now, um, when you're sitting across the table from the guy at Anheuser Busch, and he's got all those little craft craft beers there, and he's he's sitting there. Over, I have the best job in the world. I am a craft brewer, or I'm a brewer, and I get to taste beer, and yay. Right, and it's right. like, he sounds like a 10-year-old kid who has just been punished for saying the wrong thing, and is now recanting and saying something completely <laughs> different that he doesn't really even agree with. And how awkward was that for you, to sit there? You really think that, though? That's, that's I, what I got out of it, was that he just, he, how I many see shoots that. did that? I, I see mean, that. how many b right, are so, there for that? So here's what happened, and how I got, actually got to St. Louis, because. You know, again, for all those people who are saying she was the wrong person to make this film and someone else should make this film, I don't think anybody else would have had the access that I would have had. So they would never yeah. have made it that far. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I think. <laughs> Just, uh, yeah, no more. He's cut off. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, but, but what happened was basically I was trying to interview August Bush. Mm -hmm. And for a long time, I, he is the only person who I didn't get an interview with. And, and going back now, I, I understand why, which is a whole other segment. We'll do that another time, because <laughs> uh, it's a great story, and it's going to come out in the news soon. But, um, but anyway, so August invited sure you don't want to give us a scoop? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can't yet, uh, but I promise, I promise. Um, but anyway, so August did invite me to go to St. Louis, and he had actually wanted me to interview a completely other brewer, but that brewer had to go to France. Oops, and so we ended up with this guy, who I don't think necessarily that Anheuser-Busch wanted to put mm, on camera. Yeah, okay. So because he was awkward. <laughs> well, because their other guy was he's you know he's on in all their videos and and, right. and you know he's very um, charismatic, charismatic, and 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 very used to the camera. And so I kind of felt sorry for John, who they put in this spot. At the same time, I will say that I did shoot with the CEO of Miller and the CEO of Coors, and they were very magnanimous. And uh, going to St. Louis was a whole different experience. I mean, we literally had handlers who like followed us to the bathroom. And wow. it was unbelievable. And so when it came time to interview John, um, we interviewed him in, in the, their boardroom. And yes, I did set up the shot that way. Um, but there really wasn't a warm and fuzzy feel to the whole place. And so, right. you know, I don't think I did anything that, that anybody else would have done. But it was interesting. He was the only guy who came fully made up. Because we did make everybody up for the movie to look really good. Because we did, you know, we when you're on a 40 foot screen in a theater in high definition. Yeah. Except know. for poor Sam, who opens his door to his hotel room. Come on in while I go to the bathroom. <laughs> so. He actually wasn't. He went to the bathroom after. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, that was very nice of him to let us film him shave and brush his teeth. Uh, I liked that though. That was yeah, I gave like, a very okay. homely. She's well, in the room watching. Well, that you know the, the difference <laughs> I was, like, was. Am I watching Real World? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the difference. I mean, but that shows you the difference. You know, I think that had somebody from Anheuser Busch invited me to go to their home to interview them, I would have been happy to do it. Right. Th those invitations never came. It wasn't like. Mm -hmm. I decided to show the corporate people in a particular light and the other people in a different well, light. Well, I think it, 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 mm. what it did for me is it, I think it's impossible to be scripted when you're shaving and brushing your teeth and getting ready for something else and your mind, your focus you is split like fate. that. You know, it's like, so it gives, it gives <laughs> the idea that, you know, when you, when you hear what he's talking about and you hear him talk about, like, Sam has so much passion anyway when he talks about craft beer and, and anything that he's involved in. And, so it, that really, it did give a super huge contrast to this poor dude in the boardroom who's just like, you can clearly tell, just did not want to be there. <laughs> you know? Yeah, he didn't, and he came scripted. You know, we had to give mm -hmm. them, the, the difference between doing interviews with the corporate people too is we had to give them interview questions in advance, mm -hmm. which is fine, I understand. They don't want to be, you know, thrown Side for a loop. Right. Exactly. But when I did, but you know, when I sat down with the CEOs, I asked some questions off that list. The minute I asked this dude a question off the list, the interview stopped and I was taken into the bathroom and, you know, given beat the riot act. Um, <laughs> no, they didn't beat me because they knew we had the cameras. But, um, and I was mic'd. But, but you know, it was, they were very much on top of it. When it came time, for example, for the beer, there were nine people in a room um, on the side passing the beer and making sure that it was perfect like a like a fluffer in a porn film you know they had like a beer like, they had like, like beer fluffers I have no idea what you mean oh, wow. can yeah. you please elaborate <laughs> sure i can Brad elaborate Brad demonstrate or here something right. so. um, yeah for those of you who don't know maybe you can show a little visual of what a maybe not, no, not <laughs> really a maybe not um, but, but you know they Although had we could. they basically had Cut people who were so um, who wanted to make sure that everything was presented in the best possible light. Right. They even had people transcribing the interview, which I'd never had before. So I understand, and that's really the difference, you know, in making the film. I really got to see not only what people wanted me to see, but also how they operate behind the scenes. So I'm not, I'm not an Anheuser-Busch hater. It's just what they showed me was really that they, at the time, I don't know how different it is now because I think they fired half the people in St. Louis, but. You know, what they showed me was this company where everything was very controlled and where there was no individuality. And I think to me, in, in filming, I really got to see the corporate culture. And, you know, even, I mean, Sam says it in the film, you know, his company is a corporation and it is growing and, and it is about profit. And anybody who deludes themselves that craft brewers are doing this for Just passion. out of the joy of their yeah, heart. Yes, they are. And Brian from the, you know, from, from Blue Palms, mm -hmm. yeah, he likes it, but you still have to make money to stay in right. business. Right. Exactly. And so the greatest gift you can give yourself is to do what you love and to make money at it, right? right? I mean, that's like, that's the holy grail. And that's what I think craft brewers get to do. The corporate guys, are they loving it? I don't know, because there's so much control and it's not theirs, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, um, I think... Sure. You've got three fans here, and I know there's a ton of people out there that love the movie, and Twitter is a blaze right now for, of the movie, and um, there's a lot of, lot of people talking about it, a lot of people encouraging people to go out and watch it, and that's one of the things that we want to do is encourage you to go out and watch it, but what, if, you could, if you could give one message to somebody who's sitting on the fence who doesn't know for sure that they want to give you 90 minutes of their life, what would you say to them? Well, again, I think it's all about choice, so if you don't want to watch the movie, fuck you. I mean, don't watch it, but... <laughs> but... This that is, is this excellent. Is, but this is what I would hope. I mean, I would hope that at the very least, well, first of all, if you had Netflix, it doesn't really cost you anything but a few minutes of your time. So watch it, turn it off. What are you trying to say? But, but, <laughs> but ultimately, I think that, you know, a movie like this, any independent film, can only succeed because it has fans, and not just on Twitter and Facebook, and because people tell their friends. And mm -hmm. so... If you love craft beer, but you don't like Rhonda, or you don't like the fact that I can't drink, or for any of those other reasons, but you really believe in craft beer, this is the one chance that craft beer has a chance to be in people's living room and to be on their computers. And if, and if the movie doesn't succeed, it's not because I didn't try, it's because you guys didn't give it some support. I mean, ultimately, it's like what, three ninety nine on demand, three ninety nine right. on iTunes. I mean, come on, how much is a glass of beer? Like three ninety nine. Well, there you go. <laughs> so well, I and mean, I think I, I, and well, if you tell, you know, t it's not just about having craft beer drinkers try try to sample the movie. 
But it's really about telling your friends who don't drink it. And frankly, if you have friends who are entrepreneurs, I mean, those emails actually are really interesting. It's people who are um, coffee roasters or you know, right. who are doing completely other things. I mean, I'm getting tons of those emails from people who are inspired by Sam and Rhonda's journeys and they relate it to their own lives. But while they're doing that, they're also starting to think about the beers that they drank. So yeah. it's kind of like a backwards conversion. Well, and, I, and for those of you who have heard maybe negative things about it and are like, oh, I'll wait till the next craft beer movie comes out, there won't be one if this one doesn't succeed <laughs> because people are going to look at that and say, well, Beer Wars was a phenomenal movie and it didn't succeed, so clearly there's no interest in it. So create interest, create buzz. Beer Wars is as much about the revolution as good craft beer is. Go watch it. It's just a good movie to yeah. watch. I mean, awesome seriously, movie. we've taken up 45 minutes of your time. Yeah. Really? <laughs> and if you're us? subscribing to us, you need to go out and watch yeah, this you movie. you should watch some of <laughs> actual production. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Right. Like, that's the other awesome. thing. Exactly. Come on like, now. You know. You've got like montages of old footage and like Listen, wraps up real, anheuser it's... Bush across generations. I'm just like... Whoa, blow right. my mind. Well, Nothing it's a real face. movie, right? It's got, yeah. it's got graphics and motion graphics, and ultimately, it was meant to be entertaining. What's great is that people are saying, yes, you educated me, but I had fun doing exactly. it. Right. That's, and that's, I think, yeah. the most successful kind of documentary, because most documentaries, I actually hated documentaries for a yeah. long time, because right. I found them to be really preachy. I will say that I had a, a slight hesitance to press the play button on Netflix. It's like, documentary, OK. Right. Because it's a documentary, there is that slight. Uh, well, there's a stigma. I, mean, I hated so, them yeah. just as much as you. Yeah. Right. I mean, I think there's a stigma against documentaries, a stigma against you know independent films. But all I can say to kind of finish my soapbox or to get off my soapbox is, it is really hard for an independent film to get the kind of distribution that this film got. So somebody thought it was good enough to be put where it is distribution-wise. But if people don't pick it up, again, it's the same thing for like a craft brewer. You know after all the hassle you go through and the difficulty of actually getting distribution, if people don't buy it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't help the cause long right. term. Yeah. Well, and I think for the one thing I'll say to the, the viewing audience is that nothing will open your eyes to the beer industry more than the, ad, the inside sales ad for Anheuser-Busch from the 1950s. And I'm not gonna, we're not gonna like spoil it. You need to see you that. You watch the movie. The little, the little kind of video that they have on how to do their sales tactics oh, yeah. blew my mind. Yeah. Like, wow, that's better than any of the WikiLeaks emails that you read like from dumping Microsoft. out the other guys' yeah, beer. So. Yeah. It almost personifies when I say literally crush the competition. Right, exactly, you know? exactly. So. That's the message they see. But Annette, thank you very much for joining us, talking about the movie. Thank you for making the movie. I, like I said, it's my favorite documentary. So, Aww. <laughs> that's so but, sweet. Uh, usually we say stay safe and drink beer, but I think this you time you can still we'll, say it. Okay. You don't have to <laughs> I mean, you know, just say. Stay safe and stay drink safe. beer stay while safe. watching a movie. <laughs> and drink this. Stay safe and watch Beer Wars. <laughs>